Welcome to another video and for today we'll discuss discontinuity. There are instances that a function cannot satisfy the conditions of continuity and that means that function is not continuous. Now we will be dealing with the different types of discontinuity in this lesson. Now basically there are two categories of discontinuity. We have the removable discontinuity and the non-removable discontinuity or the essential discontinuity. Under non-removable discontinuity, we have the jump discontinuity and the infinite discontinuity. Now, under the removable discontinuity, we have the missing point discontinuity. So graph letter A in your screen is actually a type of removable discontinuity and particularly it is called the missing point discontinuity missing point now we also have here jump discontinuity and this looks like the graph letter B and the infinite discontinuity is shown in graph letter C with your vertical asymptote now, it's very easy to identify the point of discontinuity and its type when you are given the graph of the function, such as these graphs that you can see on your screen. Now, what if you're not given the graph of the function? Does that mean that we have to graph the function and then identify the point of discontinuity and its type? Well, that is a very tedious process. So in this lesson, I will be teaching you how to identify the point of discontinuity and its type algebraically. Now before we move on to our examples, let me share you some pointers on how to identify the type of discontinuity. Now if in a given function, for example, you have f of x and then you have x plus 1 in the numerator and then x plus 1 in the denominator and x minus 1. If there is one term or more that you can cancel out, that means that this particular factor where your point of discontinuity is, is called a missing point discontinuity. Since you have canceled it out using factor in your numerator. Now, if you say jump discontinuity that happens usually when your function is a piecewise function, say you have something and x equal x, x is greater than zero x is less than zero blah 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 so if you are given a piecewise function that is a jump discontinuity now if you have your function f of x and you are not able to cancel out any term in your numerator or denominator say we have an example like this no similar terms that means that these points of discontinuities are infinite discontinuities and the values of x here if you equate them to zero are your vertical asymptotes so let's move on to our example first is the function f of x equals x minus 1 over x squared minus 1 now, always remember that discontinuity happens only if your function is a rational function and if your denominator becomes a zero. That means that when we are looking for the points of discontinuities, all we need to do is to deal with our denominator and equate that to zero. So whatever values that can make our denominator be equal to zero are your points of discontinuity and then we will be identifying what type of discontinuity are they. So for example number one, let's try to factor out first our denominator since it is factorable. We have x minus 1 and our denominator's factors are x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now as I have said earlier, we have to equate our denominator to 0. So this becomes x plus 1 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. Now, if we isolate positive 1, this becomes negative 1 and then this becomes positive 1. So these two points are our points of discontinuities. 
Now you will be identifying the type of discontinuities of each of these points of discontinuities. Now let's go back to our function and as we can see, we can actually cancel out x minus 1. That means that x equals 1 is actually a missing point discontinuity. Now, we were not able to cancel out x plus 1. That means x equals negative 1 is an infinite discontinuity. So that is how you solve for the points of discontinuities and identify its type. Now let's move on to our second example. Now we have f of x equals x squared minus 5 all over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now as what I have said earlier, if we can still factor out our numerator and denominator, then we have to factor out. So since our numerator cannot be factored out anymore, we will just copy x minus 5. Now our denominator's factors are x minus 3 and x plus 1. Now, next step is to equate our denominator to 0. So we have x minus 3 equals 0. So we have x equals positive 3. And x plus 1 equals 0. So we have x equals negative 1. So we have these points of discontinuities. Now, let's try to identify its type. Now, since we were not able to cancel out any of them in our function, that means its type is an infinite discontinuity. Another example, we have f of x equals x plus 1 all over x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now, observe that our denominator x squared plus 2x plus 3 cannot be factored out. So what we're going to do is to check whether our denominator has real roots or imaginary roots. Now, how do we identify if our denominator has real roots or imaginary roots? We will be using the determinant formula b squared minus 4ac. Now, if the value of your denominator becomes greater than 0, that means you have two real roots. If that is equal to 0, that means you have one real root. And if the value of your denominator becomes less than 0, that means you have two imaginary roots. Now, let's try to use this formula and identify whether our denominator has real roots or imaginary roots. So, our a becomes 1, b is 2, and c equals 3. These are just the coefficients of x squared, 2x, and uh, the constant 3. So, this becomes 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. You have 4 minus 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. So the answer is equal to negative 8. Now negative 8 is less than 0. That means we have an imaginary root, meaning there is no particular value of x that can make our denominator equal to 0. This means that this function is actually continuous. So there are no points of discontinuity. So again, if you cannot make your denominator equal to zero, that means your function is continuous and there is no point of discontinuity. Now let's move on to another example. We have the f of x equals 3x squared minus 3 all over x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. Now what we're going to do is to factor out our numerator and our denominator. So we can actually extract 3. So we have x squared minus 1. And we know that x squared minus 1 is difference of 2 squares. So we can factor out x plus 1 and x minus 1. So these are the factors of our numerator. Now let's move to our denominator. 
our denominator is quite hard to factor out so let's use synthetic division let's copy their numerical coefficients we have one negative five uh, positive two and positive eight and then let's uh, look at the factors of our uh, last term or the constant term we have uh, eight uh, one negative eight negative one four two negative four negative two so let's make use negative uh, uh, let's try negative 1. So negative 1, this becomes 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. So this becomes positive 6. And then positive 8. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. And this becomes 0. So this cancels out. So 1 root is negative 1 another is uh, this becomes x squared minus 6x plus 8 now we can already factor this out we have x minus 4 and x minus 2 so if we equate this one to 0 so this one is already x equals negative 1 this is already one root now, if we equate this one to zero, this becomes x equals positive four, and this becomes x equals positive two. So, we already have our three uh, points of discontinuities. So, again, this is x plus one, x minus four, and x minus two. Now, we can cancel out x plus 1 here meaning this one x equals negative 1 is a missing point discontinuity and since we were not able to cancel out x minus 4 and x minus 2 that means x equals 4 is an infinite discontinuity and x equals 2 is also an infinite discontinuity so these are our answers now let's have this example and as we can see it is a piecewise function so we already know that this function has a jump discontinuity but how do we identify what is the point of discontinuity so to identify the point of discontinuity, what you need to consider is the value or the values that you can see in the conditions given. Now, since we only have here three, that means our point of discontinuity is at three. But if your conditions are, for example, uh, x greater than two and then x is greater than or equal to negative 5 but less than or equal to 2 and x is less than negative 5 what you need to consider is the values 2 and negative 5 but in this case we only have 3 so let's try to check if 3 is actually the point of discontinuity now to identify whether 3 is really a point of discontinuity we have to make use of these functions given the two functions so we have x plus 1 and x minus 2 squared plus 1 now if these two functions will not yield the same answer that means if they are not equal that means 3 is a point of discontinuity now, if they yield the same answer, that means 3 is actually not a point of discontinuity. So, if we substitute 3, this becomes 3 plus 1, this becomes 4. Now, this is 3 minus 2, and 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. And we know that 4 is not equal to 2. Therefore, 3 is a point of discontinuity. So our point of discontinuity is x equals 3, and its type is a jump discontinuity. So this is our 
final answer. Now here's the graph of that uh, this particular function. We have here the jump discontinuity at x equals three. That ends our discussion about discontinuity and I hope you learned something in this video. If you have some questions or clarifications, just comment down below. That's all for this video and see you in the next.